Majority Thado lives in Manipur, occupying its hills on all sides of the Imphal Valley. Under the present Manipur administrative setup, the Thados mainly inhabit the districts like Sanapati, Chirachanpur, Tignopal Nauchandil, Tamenglong, and Ukru, constituting 2,24,171 souls of the entire tribal populace of the state. Of the many cultural heritages, the peaceful village life of the Thado people may be ascribed as the most interesting one. The villages being unplanned are featured with the houses built in an irregular manner and diverse sizes, regulated by the number of inmates in every household. However, in a few well-established villages, the houses are built in several rows facing each other to form a bylan. The traditional Thadokuki village is an indispensable social, economic and political unit. To establish a village, the hilltops or the broadest parts of the high ridges with water at hand are usually selected. In a Thado village, the women folk are virtually engaged in fetching water from the nearby streams or hydrants for cooking, washing and bathing purposes. And male folks are mostly engaged in heavier works like cutting timbers and erecting pedestals in the construction of houses. Customarily, the houses are built on raised platforms with the floor of wooden planks or split bamboos. The roofs and the walls are normally made of thatching grass and bamboo matting respectively. Normally, girls are engaged to help the male folks in the construction of houses by passing them bamboo ropes and other necessities at their own levels. Through the help of dormitory members, beautiful houses for their own living could be constructed with their gifted skills. The Tado village is a large one and contains a mixed population. It is divided into several quarters of land, which will be inhabited by people of same clans comprising of different dormitories. These dormitory members would relentlessly set up for jhum cultivation every day. Every year, there would be a general meeting of the entire villages in which the chief would pronounce the area for cultivation for the year. The villagers would willingly comply with the advice of the chief in the village meeting, and they would cultivate the specific area suggested by the chief every year. After hard works in their jhum cultivation, the Thados also have leisure at home in the evening after retiring from their works. With the increase of population, the number of Thado village also increases year after year. A person who intends to establish a new village needs to obtain prior permission from the native village chief 
or the principal head of the clan he belongs to. Seeking of permission normally requires presentation of a pig and a jar of rice beer to the concerned chief. In this context, the locally brewed rice beer would be mixed with water in a barrel and a joint of a typical bamboo would be used as pipe for imbibing the rice beer. Before sipping the rice beer, the chief would ask the permission seeker about his plan for establishing a new village. The permission seeker would then narrate the intention for establishing the new village. Then after, the chief and the permission seeker and his loyalist will sip the rice beer one after another. During this course of time, the chief will acknowledge the permission seeker about his willingness or unwillingness to grant permission for establishing a new village. And in case the chief is willing to grant permission, a pig would be butchered and a feast would be thrown by the permission seekers ultimately. In this regard, the chief and the loyalist of such a person intending to institute a new village will go to the proposed site and erect a tripod of wooden peg for cooking purpose at the center of the village site to perform a kind of rite in pursuit of finding a good location. Then, the priest chants his incantation and hits the egg with a slow fire. The loyalist of the intending chief would participate in every ritualistic performance. In this consultation of omen, if the albumin or a little yolk of the egg trickles out through the hole on the axis, the site for the new village is considered suitable. But if the egg happens to burst out, the site is ascribed as unsuitable. In such a case, the site is abandoned naturally. In selecting site for new village, number of rites are performed. These rites are performed so as to appease the household god in the forest god as well who will decide the luck of the chief in his villages. At the place where the observation of omen shows good sign, a cock is sacrificed to the spirits or god of the sight. The priest will then chant his incantation and release the cock alive in the forest. In this regard, wild turmeric also plays an important role for the Tado community in the observation of location for constructing a house. In this aspect, a wild turmeric is cut into two pieces at one strike. If the inner side of the piece lies upward and the other side downward to the ground, it is considered as a good sign. If the consultation is not favorable, 
Additional steps will be carried out repeatedly at different places till the omen is favorable. When a good sign of omen is observed at any site, the skulls of animals or human beings are kept or displayed on a selected hillock at the outskirt of the village. Here the two pieces of turmeric are buried over which a stone would be erected. This practice is known as Kolimtha in Tado dialect, which means diversion of evil spirit. By doing so, the evil spirits are appeased and prevented from entering the village. Such a spot where a stone is erected upon wild turmeric becomes the village gate called Homol in Tado dialect. The Thados also follow the practice of finding a good location for constructing house after finding proper village site. For constructing a new house, a few pieces of rice are kept at the cleared off surrounding of the house site for one night. The position of this rice will be inspected the next morning. Here, if these pieces of rice are found still remaining unmoved in their position, it is considered as a good omen. Then, the construction of new house will be carried out. For constructing a new house, the members of different dormitories would be engaged relentlessly. These dormitory members would fetch bamboo, wood and thatch from the forest and construct new houses in the new found village. In this process, boys would be engaged in heavier works, while girls would be assigned easier work such as serving of refreshment and clearing of the house site. Construction of a new house normally takes 10 to 15 days with the active participation of the village dormitory members. When the construction of the house structure is accomplished and the time for roofing comes, more members would be engaged. On this day, a certain boys will climb the rooftop for roofing while others would help them in passing bundles of thatches, bamboo ropes and bamboo planks. On this day, the owner of the new house would throw dinner party to the dormitory members. Whenever the construction of a house is completed, the priest would tie a fog branch of tree against the main house pedestal at the portico. The priest will then chant his incantations to appease the house god. <laughs> 
patinin at ibutahan. Then he will slaughter a cock and spray its blood over the green leaves. Then the host family and the priest would enter the house and cook the meat of the cock in a pot. When the meat gets ripe, the priest will perform a rite by chanting a few incantations. Then he will throw the liver and a part of intestine of the cog out of the main door. This practice withstands an inauguration of the new house. Then after only the inmates inhabit the new house. Once a village is established, its chief automatically becomes the custodian of his subject. He is also considered as the master of all lands and everything living or non-living within his jurisdiction. Therefore, all the villagers are obliged to pay taxes to him. Therefore, all the villagers are obliged to pay taxes to him. These taxes comprise of petty tax, village free labor tax, land tax, wild games tax, and tax on domesticated animals. Every year, a basketful of paddy is compulsorily paid to the chief. As the chief enjoys village free labor status, all the grown-up villagers are compelled to render a day's free labor in favor of the chief once a year whether for counting the village population or for constructing his house. During noon time, when the villagers usually have a break in their day's work, they used to take rice beer and would enjoy a siesta normally. The rent of cultivated land is also paid to the chief annually. The amount varies according to the size and fertility of land. It is a variable amount paid in cash or in kind. All hunters who kill wild animals are obliged to pay a hind leg or its head each to the chief as wild games tax. The villagers are also compelled to pay tax on domesticated animals to the chief. This tax is levied when any domesticated animal gives birth. In this regard, one each of the animal's offsprings becomes the share of the chief. A Thado village comprises of many families, which structure is patriarchal in social organization, and traces its descent through male members only. The children of these families take the clan name of their father, and eldest son becomes the head of the family at his father's death. To set up a full-fledged household family, one has to encompass three groups to help him in maintaining a close and compact relationship with the families of different clans. Of these groups, the first one is called Tulebe, which means family helpers. The second one is Zolegol, which means soulmates. And the third one is Sungao, which means maternal relative. One interesting thing in a Thado village is that when a boy visits his girl in love, he used to take with him a musical instrument called Gosem, through which he can deliver various messages of love and romance in different tunes. In a Thado village after harvesting season, the people used to carry out different activities at home. In their socio-cultural life, the Thado girls in the village are assigned to pounding and winnowing of rice. 
There may also be more dormitories according to population and size of the village. Young boys will break up themselves into several groups, and each group will select a family having girls to set up a dormitory. Apart from the works in the Joom fields, they would also set out to collect firewoods in the forest as a part of their basic amenities whenever they are relaxed from the seasons of cultivation. The Tados are also accustomed to take cigarettes. Normally, girls used to roll dry tobacco leaves in a dry leaf of a particular tree called Yelting. They will present these rolled up tobacco leaves as cigarette to their sweaters. During the early days, Cigarettes were lit up by burning charcoals as there was no lighter as of now. The laws connected with social, economic, religion and cultural activities are the major backbones of a Thado Kuki community. Therefore, every village constitutes bachelor dormitory which is a place where young boys live together at night and learn all the fundamental practices of healthy social living. At their leisures, Boys are accustomed to play different games at the arbor of their village. The most interesting games the Thado boys usually play was throwing off tops and smiting the other whirling tops on the ground. Similarly, girl folks were also interested in playing an indigenous game known as Kangkap in Tadokuki. They usually play this game in the afternoon, mostly before sunset when they are free from hard works. The preparatory period and activities of the annual festival of the village labor corps, which is followed by different cultural dances participated by the young and the old, marks the zenith of glory of a well-instituted Thadokuki village. There are three major feasts connected with crops and cultivation, which are collectively termed as good festivals celebrated with pomp and glory that reunite the four seasons in a year. And these festivals ultimately approve of a village as well instituted.
Thus, the Thadokuki ethnic group enjoys a peaceful life in the well-established villages of their own in different parts of the Northeast India.